Greetings, and this is the second video that I'm uploading today. Um, and that is quite rare just because there's a lot of things that came out and I feel like I didn't want to put them all in one video just because that video would be like an hour long and stuff. So I'm just sort of gonna go through like the, not the highlights, but like, I guess the highlights, but like the big changes that I think would have affect gameplay um, for the new upcoming uh, expansion. So they are coming out with a patch that sort of works with the uh, cards that are coming in with the expansion. Um, so I did watch the, the overview video. Uh, they went through a lot, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below, as well as this one, the patch notes. If you guys didn't see it just yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys already have, uh, just because this has been the talk of all of Gwen pretty much for like the past I think, month or so. Um, anyway, so uh, they went through a lot. Um, I'm not going to go through sort of the enhancement on the gameplay, on the, uh, the gameplay, on the uh, visuals, on the audio, just because they kind of covered that themselves. And... I uh, just watched the video to find that out. I kind of want to go through more of like the cards that got tweaked and I, I'm not going to go through all of them just because I feel like some were like, you know, provision changes and stuff like that. Uh, but there are some pretty big cards out there that I, I'm going to see is sort of going to change gameplay a little bit. Um, changes were made throughout all of the factions. Um, some more than others, of course, just because of like the kind of support that Iron Judgment was giving to certain archetypes. And you guys can pretty much guess which ones are getting the support. Uh, anyway, so as you guys can already see here, I'm just going to go through the chain, the summoning, the, not summoning, it's not summoning circle. It's like, I'm just going through all the patch notes and I'm going to get started with the first card that I think is big is Avalak. So Avalak no longer does immune, which is good because of the defenders coming out and uh, P I, I saw threads of people complaining about defender plus immune equals ultimate power and that is true It's just ultimate power. So Avalok now just became a weather spawner So you just spawn and play biting frost fog or rain um, Avalok didn't really see much play in the um, uh, In ranked he, he was played in some decks that relied on a really strong engine that just couldn't be destroyed once his uh, um, Immune was played on him. Um, but other than that Avalok really wasn't used for anything else so moving him to a weather guy um again weather wasn't getting weather didn't get any love at all for uh in the expansion so i'm not sure how much they're gonna i'm not sure how much ablock's gonna see play but just know that he's no longer immune uh which is a good thing uh second somewhat big change is the zoltan com uh, zoltan scoundrel so zoltan Sc scoundrel was the most expensive card but before this expansion comes out um and it's allowing duda agitator and companion to either boost your all your units in a row by two or damage all the enemy units on the enemy row by two so it's so long you're doing that it got nerfed down to one um but in exchange sultan scoundrel's power went up to four and provision went down from 15 to 10. um despite these changes uh the main use for zoltan of course was the swarm row um and the swarm row is really no longer going to be that effective due to the introdu introduction of the new dwarves that came out that's just going to fully support their swarm um are uh, the swarm decks in their respective faction and as well with the insectoids and these uh in the arachis drones which are now being called drones um in the monsters faction so there's really not much use for zoltan scoundrel at this point he's just sort of a generic weaker version of the faction specified um swarm boost cards so that's another change. Uh, Lambert Swordmaster's ability used to be that you would destroy a unit with resilience, but now you can now damage an enemy unit and all of its copies by two. Now, it was described in the video. Oh, not to mention power changed from five to six and provision went up from eight to nine. So, similar to Gimpy Gerwin's ability where you damage a unit and all of its units uh, and all of its copies by three, this is sort of a weaker version, but it is neutral, so it can be used in any faction, I believe. Uh, I think most Witchers have always been neutral, so. Uh, it's pretty good, except for the Nilfgaard ones, of course, that are very specific. Um, but yeah, so Lambert's now sort of the answer to those swarm depths, to the Morality Dwarves, to the drones, uh, etc. So Lambert's going to be sort of the anti-swarm deck, uh, anti-swarm card. So if you're putting a deck that just counters swarm, Lambert, probably you'd want Lambert in it. But then again, it's not likely that you'd see um, a lot of the swarm decks. Although you might, I think you might, just because of how much, how much love they were getting. Um, speaking of Summoner's Circle that I accidentally said in the early in the first part of the, in the beginning of the video, Summoning Circle no longer does progressive charges for letting you summon, a, uh, letting you deck thin. Instead, it now creates a play a bronze unit from any faction. So this is now essentially the uh, the, the neutral version of the rune. This is a neutral runestone pretty much. Um, so it is good for assimilate. Um, you can have it's good for assimilate Nilfgaard because you are still creating a card that's not from your deck. 
uh, which is actually still pretty good. And if you somehow come across um, decent engines from other factions that, I mean, that's the only way I can really see this card working at this point is if it's part of Assimilate Nilfgaard, which I could see maybe one summoning circle and a couple of Assimilate Nilfgaards, just because Assimilate did get some support uh, from the patch notes, which we'll get down to later on. Um, Vigos Muzzle's tactic category has been removed, so Vigos Muzzle's no longer going to get the boost from Hefty Helgas and the Fire Ballistas, and I feel like that's going to sort of make its, well, it's not really going to make its way out of the meta, it's just that more different decks are just coming into the meta now. So I'm not sure if the tactic category being removed is going to make that big of a difference, but just know that it's no longer going to benefit uh, the tactic reliant cards. So yeah. Um, Zolta, so it's no longer actually going to count for like up there Dahi's of uh, hero power um, for seizing a unit. So it's no longer going to count that since it's no longer considered a tactic. Um, so that's sort of it for the. I mean, the Shoop one is just a change, an internal change where I think Resilience went from the strong version to like the, sort of the middle version. And the middle version sort of. Uh, sorry, the. Um, the big version, when I say big version, I mean like 2, 4, and 8, I think it's the power, different powers of Shoop. Uh, so Shoop, the 8 power, now instead of the resilience, um, it's now going from, uh, you boost a random unit by 2, and the resilience from the 8 power Shoop, instead you now boost a random unit in your hand by 2, I think I went over to do that. Um, and the, actually the middle power, the 4 power Shoop, that's the one that's getting resilience, which makes sense. Just because I feel like with the 8 power, it was really hard to remove the shoop unless you, you know, locked it and stuff. But putting it in Hunter makes it even weaker in a way just because it can get easily destroyed at 4 power. So, not a big deal there. Not like that many people use shoop anyway. Monsters. This is a big, this is somewhat, somewhat of a big one. Um, Because of all the love that Swarm and Sectoids were getting, um, I'm pretty, good, pretty happy that they actually changed the Aracha Swarm's ability. So you no longer summon a drone when a unit dies. Instead, a drone is summoned when an organic card is played. So this will probably sort of encourage the use of organic cards. Um, in a way, that's good. Um, but you still also get to spawn a drone in the allied row. But instead of three charges, you now get five. So you do still get... So I... It's not as easy anymore to get drones out into the field. So you have to rely now on cards that you summon the drones, like a lot of drone support cards that we saw during the uh, video reveals. Um, so in sort of it's sort of um, sort of a give and take on that. When you're giving drone support to cards that are coming on the expansion, you're taking them away from the Ratchet Swarm ability. And I feel like it makes it not as easy to get drones out because this one made it really easy. All you have to do is just easily kill a monster and drone comes out. And it's just insane. Um the Ratchet's Drone now changed to Drone, of course. Um, so another here, let me go back to my notes because I took the notes of the ones that are pretty important. Uh, Forktail did go down from 6 to 4, but it still damaged every unit by 1. But again, against Rowdy Dwarves, it's absolutely obsolete because Rowdy Dwarves have exactly 1 armor and Forktail only damages all units by 1. Plus, with you no longer get that benefit from the Aracha Swarm because, again, if you destroy any drones, no more will spawn. So you gotta be careful with that. They probably won't see much Forktails um, in the Aracha Swarm decks anymore. Gusty War Power changed from C to six, 3 to 6. I think, again, because of the change and how easy it was to get drones out, I think it was... They said it was okay for to make Glusty Warp's power boosted just because, like, they did try... They did mitigate the easiness of getting drones out, so that makes sense to me. Um, there, you're still going to get quite a bit of drones out, especially if you leave your opponent's field um, un, unmanaged. So definitely, you're definitely going to see a lot of disruption-based decks in the upcoming... Um, expansion. I wouldn't be surprised if you even see a Usurper or two version styles of decks out there as well. Uh, just to purely counter... Essentially, essentially it's, an, it's going to be an anti-swarm deck. Anti-swarm, anti-control, anti-meta, etc. Uh, Usurper is just going to be like the anti-hero leader um, for the upcoming expansion, which is going to be a lot of fun because I I recently love using Usurper. It's been a lot of fun to play. Um, Given Provision went from 7 to 5. Again, it's a uh, similar concept. Similar concept to Glusty Warp's boost as well is um, even though it's still going to be 8 power, there's no change to its power or its ability, it's still going to eat something. Um, I was pretty sure when like I just eat a drone, another one would come out, so Griffin pretty much got no punishment. This one you're going to get a bit of a punishment because you're going to eat at least one power from a unit, unless of course you have engines that boost based on consumption, that will probably mitigate it, but at least it's not just doing it by via hero power anymore. So simply have the right leader with Griffin and you get a zero 
a net zero with Griffin. And yeah. Uh, Slizzard power change from 4 to 5. That's not too big of a change. But the one here is the Ran Warrior ability. So he just he turned engine into a different way. So it's still ben it still um benefits to when a unit is destroyed and you destroy it, but this time it boosts itself by one instead of pinging. So it's just removing yet another way of damaging your opponent, but that's okay, it's still an engine for that. Skellige just got one change, but it's a pretty some it's a somewhat big change because it's another support for pirates and ships, which of course is becoming to be a prominent archetype coming in the Skellige faction, in which the Dimmon Corsair now becomes an engine that it now has a similar ability to Elven Swords Master from Scoia'tael, in which now it gives an enemy bleeding for two turns, whereas the Elven Swords Master just damages. Um, and whenever you play a ship, decrease cooldown by one, similar to its um, Scoia'tael counterpart, in which whenever you play an elf, decrease cooldown by one. Um, the Good thing about this is it's inflicting bleeding, so I actually think it's going to be a bit more powerful than the Elven Swordmaster, just simply because of the... We're going to see quite a, an abundance of armor decks. So I'm going to be expecting that already um, come the gameplay video coming out Thursday, because I'm going to go back to the regular scheduling. Uh, so, whenever you play a ship, decrease cooldown by one, give an enemy unit bleeding, and as you know, of course, bleeding ignores armor, so armor is not going to get affected by bleeding. Instead, it's going to go straight to your health. And it's gonna bring it down. So this card is gonna become a bit more of an important engine in the upcoming um, gameplay. Uh, Northern Realms didn't get much. Uh, just the ability of mobilization just can no longer be used when there's no units. So I guess that's for in case mistakes were made. So at least they kind of mitigated that. Um, Scoia'tael's changes were just provision changes. Um, Mystic Echo provisions changed from 15 to 14 just because of how strong Francesca was. Um, I I'm pretty sure like back in the Gwent. Um, Masters Challenge. Is it Masters? I can't remember what challenge or uh, what uh, tournament it was that we just watched recently. Um, but mixed it uh, with Francesca being so strong and she was banned at every challenge, at every match. Uh, going down from 15 to 14 does make sense. Um, Call the Forest boost changed from 2 to 1, so it's no longer going to be as strong as it was before. Uh, but Isengrim's Council actually got a little bit stronger in which not any, whatever card you choose between the Dwarf, Dryad, and Elf that got randomly chosen, uh, it gets boosted. Plus, it's still deck thin, so I think Eyes of Game's Council got stronger a little bit here. Um, and it's, also, it's still pretty good if you plan on playing a Harmony-based deck, so that's not so bad. Elfguard's getting a couple of soldier, soldier tags into their cards. Again, I'll describe them in the video. I'm just sort of reiterating it for them. Um, Imperial Force. So I, I noticed that they added some basic hero powers. I didn't notice that. Like, it wasn't... I don't think they were hero powers, because this one is Imperial Formation. I think this is a basic hero power. I can't remember it. Um, but you boost an allied unit by two with four charges, and if all charges have been exhausted, then you move a soldier unit from your deck to the top. This is a pretty strong card because A, Nilfgaard's getting a lot of soldiers, um, and B, it's it's pretty much a stronger version of like Aldric or the Fisher King, cards that let you move units to the top. Um, it doesn't get the boost, unfortunately, but you get you get that draw, or you can even get it out from Build Your Fort. So again, this is a way of sort of getting again that Tibber deck, move it up, Build Your Forts, move it in, move in the Tibber, and you don't even activate its deployability. So it's again, it's one of those deck manipulation uh, mechanics that Nilfgaard is gonna get good is good for disruption and manipulation is what they do best. Um, Master of Disguise ability has actually become a locked engine, so that. Even if there's a lock engine stuck in the field, you it now gets benefit from it. And the provision went down to four because most engines are four or five cost. Uh, Slave Hunter has now become an assimilate support, which is great. We're seeing that this is where I was talking about the similar assimilate support coming from. Um, and it has a deployability, so it's no longer just a straight up assimilate. Um, you play it down, damage an enemy unit by two, and it changed from one to three. And I believe it is still a five cost, so you get that five for five net zero plus the assimilate. So. Assimilate's getting some pretty decent engines coming in. Slave Infantry got nerfed a little bit, uh, not because of its provision cost change, of course, that boosted it up, but because of its changing from 5 to 4. So if a unit went down to 1 and you play Slave Infantry to bring it up to 9, uh, to bring it up to 5, that'll be a 9 uh, nine power for 5 provision. Uh, so for, sorry, for 7 provision. Uh, now the most you can get is for 7 to 5. So it's not going to be as strong as it was before. Syndicate, the main change here actually is the Novigradian Justice. Uh, Novig Novigradian Justice was a really strong, is a really strong card. Um, I saw a lot of Syndicate slash uh, Squiretail decks running this card. Moving its provision up from 11 to 12, I'm not sure if that's going to take away um, the usage rate of this card. Maybe just a little bit. 
uh, but because Syndicate didn't see many other changes that were super important, like Bloody Good Fun changed from 3 to 4, what this pretty much means is I know Bloody Good Fun, um, you, you get the profit and then you use up all the coins and then you damage a unit by the amount of coin that you paid from this card. So it's just an extra point of damage essentially, which is still pretty good. You can still remove engines, so it's much more uh, reliable as a um, damage output card. Uh, Congregation Power, I believe this is the one that lets you spawn two Fire Sworn Zealots, and if you have no coins, then you spawn three. So this again sort of uh, encourages the use of just a little bit uh, for a Swarm Fire Sworn. Um, and yeah, so those are all sort of the major changes that are coming out. Of course, I'm going to leave a link to the video and this patch notes if you guys haven't seen it just yet to sort of see the full changes. Uh, if there are any changes that you guys like or probably didn't like, um, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed and subscribe for more Gwent videos. Other than that, as I was heading out, catch you guys in the next one.